Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Welcome back. It's another Red Pill Religion podcast. Red Pill Religion, where amongst the things we say is that religion, politics, and culture can never be separated, no matter how much you try. So one of the things we like to do is talk to people of various religions and various religious points of view about all of these subjects. If you like the work we're doing, please support our work on redpillreligion.com. On redpillreligion.com, we have all of our content. We have been chased off and shadow banned and otherwise harassed uh, for the last couple of years on various services. If you are seeing us on YouTube, please give us a like and a subscribe. If you're seeing us on BitChute, welcome. We welcome people to join us on BitChute. It's a platform that's a little bit safer. So uh, our, our fundraiser is going pretty well, but if you'll hit the PayPal tip jar or the subscribe star, we'd appreciate it, and we will soon be available on MeWe app. Okay, so today I'm honored to say that we are joined by a member of the Haredi Jewish community, uh, Rabbi Yisrael David Weiss. Did I say that right, Rabbi? Perfect. Well, shalom. Thank you for joining us. Now you're with the you're you're with a a, a group a subset of Jews known as the Haredi community. Is that right? Uh, well, first, with the help of the Almighty, as he say, my name is Rabbi Israel David Weiss from Neture Karta, Jews United Against Zionism. And I pray to the Almighty, he should bestow upon me his truth, his wisdom, that I may be worthy of conveying his message and so sanctify his name. Uh, a subset, I don't know how you would uh, 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 really uh, um, uh, section off or how you would do that. But basically, you know, Judaism is a religion to serve God. And it is a, a, it, it is a covenant that Jewish people made with the Almighty on, on Mount Sinai uh, 3,000 years ago. And Haredi means God-fearing. It means people who are upholding the Torah uh, according to the Jewish a covenant that was given to us 3,000 years ago, and that, that hasn't changed through these 3,000 years that we're simply upholding the Torah around the world, invariably, wherever you will find around the world, the very religious community, the ones who uphold the Torah. It's, it's, we may have, you know, nuanced and different customs, but Haredi simply means the Jews who uphold the covenant, the Ten Commandments, and so forth. Uh, that's what Haredi means. So, you know, to uh sort of you know divide in, into like a group like that is a very i don't i don't understand these divisions or whatever uh there's obviously many um groups who claim to speak in the name of judaism which I, it's not the topic of today but uh for instance uh in uh, 250 years or 300 years ago a group started that was called reform judaism that today is the majority um, uh, Jews who do not keep the Ten Commandments, don't keep the Sabbath, the basics of Judaism. They say they are free from that. They don't have to do that. And they reformed exactly what the word means. They are, they have reformed the Torah. They don't, so they claim that, you know, that it wasn't given by God and they can do what they want. Um, so they are the majority. That's not a question that the ones who don't uphold the Torah. But uh, obviously, I mean, so anybody who was, um, a little intelligent would understand that this can't possibly uh, be a representation of Judaism. R rather, the ones who you would like to call sub uh, something, uh, uh, we are simply basically upholding the religion uh, to in its authenticity. Well, I, I know there are sub groups within uh, Orthodox Judaism. For example, I've had a few friends who are with a group called Chabad, and some others who are not associated with Chabad. So I was just trying to okay. sort that out. But uh, uh, well, well, it's, you know, again, it's, you know, this is, this is, I don't think this, uh, this program is about that, actually. But basically, yeah. Chabad is, um, would, you know, uh, technically would be considered Haredi. Chared means fear, means God fearing. It's okay. uh, right. So anybody who's truly orthodox, who follows the orthodox, who follows the Torah, up, up, keep, upholds the covenant, is considered Haredi. Um, the difference between us and Chabad is an unfortunate one, which, uh, which is the topic that we will be speaking about with God's help, and that is how uh, Zionism, uh, which is a movement which is uh, unfortunately a very, very popular, but that is something that is like an adhesion 
to Judaism that started uh, a that started a hundred uh, uh, 130 years 150 years ago um, this movement uh, is is something which unfortunately has affected many Haredi Jews and Chabad is one of those movements that was affected from the Haredi community and um, and that's what we should basically get into so I, we're basically talking about that we are from people who are upholding the covenant of God, following the Torah, according to the letter of the law, uh, as we've had for 3,000 years. And again, around the world, whether it would be in Jerusalem or New York, or it really doesn't matter where in Australia, the religious communities, are, we uphold the, the Torah the same. And you will find uh, that with the help of the Almighty, the very religious communities uh, around the world, again, whether it would be in Australia or in Canada or in the United Kingdom in London, the very religious communities, the ones who uphold the law, the Torah, according to the way it was given to us, they are in opposition uh, uh, to this concept of Zionism. And I think I should really explain uh, to people what we're talking about, what this is Zionism and where, where that comes to Judaism. I have some thoughts on that that, my, that I think will, uh, will, will help the audience understand and make the conversation easier. Just before we get to it, I mean, uh, yes, what, what the, you just heard in the audience is correct. Uh, uh, Rabbi Weiss here is with a group of Orthodox, very religious Jews who are very uh, critical of Israel. The, the, I'm probably going to butcher the pronunciation, but Natsurai Karta, Jews United Against Israel or against Zionism, sorry, not against Israel. That would be weird. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes against Israel, the state of Israel, against the state of Israel. Yeah, and we've got, we'll make sure that we've got a link on the low barn on the blog where you can find their NTA, nkusa.org site and their uh, uh, Naturai Karta International Facebook page. Be sure to visit them. And this gets us to the question, which is that basically your group, and this turns out not to be unusual from what I know among Orthodox Jews, um, is extremely critical of the, the current modern state of Israel. And furthermore, uh, that uh, 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 Zionism in particular is a problem. And I will tell you what I have come. By the way, I'm not Jewish, but maybe this will maybe you'll appreciate this. The way I see it, uh, uh, Rabbi, is that there, there's there are in this world godless ideologies, and then there are ideologies which at least believe there's some kind of god, whether it's the god of Abraham or not. They haven't. Uh, they have at least some idea that there is a God. Um, and then there are godless ideologies. Two of the godless ideologies, one of the godless ideologies everybody knows is globalist communism, and it's very hostile to spiritual people. And another is ethnic nationalism. And you have here in the United States, you have white nationalists, you have black nationalists. In the Middle East, you have Arab nationalists. Um, and my take on Zionism is what, and what it really is, is a Jewish ethnic, a godless Jewish ethnic nationalist ideology. That's how I see it. In other words, that Zionism is closer to fascism than most people would realize, and is not really an ideology that is very favorable, especially to religious views, Jews. Now, that is my impression. What do you think? Uh, well, okay, with the help of the Almighty, we are very, uh, uh, should I say cautious, or we are, very, we are warned by the Torah as Jewish people, and since the destruction of the temple 2,000 years ago, that we are not to uh, meddle in, in uh, world uh, affairs, world politics. We are to be loyal citizens. We were sent into exile, dispersed uh, between the nations, and we have to be loyal citizens in every country we reside, uh, uh, be respectful to, world, to the world leaders, and pray for the well-being of our leaders, even if we may not... Uh, be very happy with the way we are treated. So the, um, you know, a lot of times Jews were taxed uh, um, exorbitantly. So, but basically, so basically, uh, we, I, you know, I'm reluctant to, you know, the to get into the issues that uh, about of other, uh, uh, you know, different uh, uh, ways of government around the world and so forth. So that I'm going to leave to the side. But I will talk about Zionism with God's help. And again, you are this is where you are. Uh, you you've hit the, the nail on the head. 
It is a pure nationalism. It is actually removing uh, God from the equation. It is not the concept of Zionism is a movement that is a, 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 a nationalist movement, an ideology to reach a certain goal of uh, having uh, a sovereignty and so forth for a group of people. Um, and, and and just I think uh, if you'll bear with me, uh, I'll I'll tr I'll explain a little more in, 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 uh, in depth ahead. what happened. Okay, and first I have to apologize. I'm just going through a strep a strep throat, so uh, uh, it's a little my voice is a little broken and so forth. And I have to keep on drinking tea while I'm talking. Forgive me, please. Um, the, the Judaism, as I've mentioned, is is a religion. It is a covenant that Jews made with the Almighty 3,000 years ago on Mount Sinai. Moses went up on Mount Sinai and took the uh, Torah from the Almighty. It was given by the Almighty. Um, and it is the laws of the Torah, 613 commandments that we've accepted. We've accepted to be subservient to God and uphold all these laws that were written in the Torah that was given to Moses. Uh, we've been following this without any gap in our history for 3,000 years. We went, we went, uh, this was after we left Egypt. We were commanded by God to go into the Holy Land. Uh, we went there with miraculous happening. They walked around the walls of Jericho. When they went in, J Joshua, uh, Joshua, we call him the prophet, and, um, and the walls sunk in. So it was a miraculous happening, the will of God. But God stipulated that, we should, um, we have to be in a very high level of holiness in what we call the Holy Land, like God's garden, the Holy Land, uh, which is basically like Palestine, um, that area. And we had to accept this uh, holiness at a very high level in order to be able to exist there. If not, we were warned by God that we will be uh, banished from the land and spread out through the nations. This is the covenant we made with God. We have to keep the, the Ten Commandments, the, the Sabbath, and many uh, not to kill, not to steal, and be, many, many laws of, um, of, of the Torah. Uh, Zionism is a, a, a transformation. That's a, it's a mere hundred odd years old, this movement, and it's a transformation uh, to nationalism, to uh, a concept of having a piece of land it's a base material concept of having a piece of land uh, that in, uh, includes an Olympic team, includes Nobel Prize winners, it includes a strong army, uh, that they should be uh, a, a first-rate country that, they, that they, they aspire to, that they should be proud of themselves, that they're uh, on par with, with the United States and, uh, and, and you know, the, the most uh, forward countries and, uh, you know, that around the world. Uh, and that is what, the, what they are aspiring to and uh, what they claim to be, that it's, it's basically a sovereignty. Uh, this is not what Judaism is. It is totally not what Judaism. Judaism is to accept that, not that we're, and they, they claim to be a democracy. I mean, not always that they claim to be a democracy, but um, uh, they wanted to aspire maybe to socialism and maybe um, uh, you know, to different concepts of it. But now they proudly announce their democracy and basically meaning that they're free of any extra uh, yoke of responsibility. You can be you proudly announce you could be an, um, an atheist there. You could be a, a um, uh, you know, could be a, a, a gay person or something, not uphold the laws of God, and it's not a problem at all, as long as you are loyal to that country. Uh, while Judaism is that you have to uphold the laws, yet so at the same time they claim they're a Jewish state. So, I mean, anybody who just, uh, um, uh, on the uh, superficially, if you just try to understand this, you realize that the great contradiction in what Zionism is, is it a Jewish state, which means to uphold the covenant of God, subservient to God, or is it a democracy? Yet from one side of the mouth, they keep announcing to the world that the only democracy in the Middle East, um, and at the same time, they're telling people we are a Jewish state and the, the land belongs to us because God gave it to us in the Torah. So you find these, this, this, uh, contradic this contradiction, uh, this awesome contradiction in, in and of itself. But again, Judaism is subservience to God. Zionism is a transformation to nationalism. Uh, our religion is 3,000 years. Th their movement is a mere 100-odd years. Our movement 
uh, 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 Judaism is upheld around the world uh, uh, with, with different customs, depending on what country, but it, it is upheld around the world. And uh, it doesn't matter if you're one side, if you're in the, um, Europe or in uh, uh, or in Asia or in uh, Jerusalem or the United States here. It is basically to uphold the, the Torah, and the more the religious, invariably the very religious community is in a total opposition to this transformation to Zionism. And they oppose Zionism because it is really basically a rebellion against God. Now, let me explain why this concept of nationalism is a direct rebellion against God. Uh, in and of itself, of course, in essence, that to say that you're free, you're a democracy, and that you can uh, um, uh, that, that you can have, you, you don't have to uphold the laws of the Torah. That understandably is not acceptable according to the Torah. That's our whole covenant that we upheld for 3,000 years. Uh, but there's uh, more to it than that. Uh, the Jewish the, the Jewish people, since the, the, we were sent to the land, of, as I mentioned, God stipulated with us to uphold the Torah. We were warned that if we're not on the level we have to be, we will be sent into exile. We were sent into exile, with the, as we were warned by all the prophets, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Isaiah, etc. And we were, we, we, came, we were sent into exile with the destruction of the temple 2,000 years ago. And once we were spread out, we were sent into exile and spread out throughout the world. We were put on the three oaths of God. One, that we should not attempt to return and mass in large numbers as a nation to the Holy Land. Secondly, we should not rebel against any nation. As I mentioned earlier, we have to be uh, uh, loyal citizens in every country we reside, pray for the well-being of that country, not rebel against any nation. And thirdly, not to make any attempt to end the exile. And this is a, a, a very stringent oath of God called the Oaths of Exile that was uh, given to us through a prophecy of King Solomon. King Solomon is the one who built the second temple, and he said it as a prophecy before the temple was destroyed. And Jews, for 2,000 years now, upheld these three oaths. So we should not attempt to make any Jewish sovereignty, not return in mass, not rebel against nations, not make one inch of Jewish sovereignty throughout the world. This is the uh, basics of Judaism, that we have to uphold the Torah, the covenant God, and not attempt to recreate Jewish sovereignty. Zionism, which came this last hundred odd years, is uh, totally ignored all these oaths. Basically, these were non-religious Jews, and they decided to create a sovereignty. So in and of itself, regardless of if it's done in, in an inhabited land, as in Palestine was, it would be in a, a barren land, in, a, in an uninhabited land, uh, it would still be forbidden for us, and Jews around the world would never accept, Jews who are true to the Torah will never accept this concept of making a Jewish state, because it's a decree of God, of exile, and that, that we are, you know, uh, upholding for 2,000 years not to make our own sovereignty. But you add to that the fact that this sovereignty was made in Palestine, where the majority of people living in Palestine were uh, the Muslim community. Then there was uh, a second uh, a large group that, that was the Christian community. And, and the third group was the Jewish group who were actually a God-fearing community. Um, and I, let me explain again that um, Jews could live there and were able to live there according to God, according to the Torah, uh, as, and not as a sovereignty, but as individuals, we were allowed to live there. And we have throughout these hundreds of years, and it was a very God-fearing community living in Palestine. And all three of these groups uh, did not want to be overtaken by this uh, this uh, movement of Zionism, this concept of a, of a so-called Jewish state, a sovereignty of, of, of Zionism, and they really didn't want this. So obviously the Muslim community didn't want it, the Christian community, and even the Jewish community. So the concept of creating a Jewish state is, transgresses the oaths of God that we, sh we are forbidden to have a sovereignty. It transgresses the concept of rebelling against nations and the basics of the uh, the laws of the Torah that says you shouldn't thou shalt not kill thou shalt not steal. So in every aspect, this concept of making a Zionist state of Israel flies in the face of Judaism and totally uh, contradictory to Judaism. 
it, it really, it, it, it's antithetical to our belief. And therefore, universally, all the rabbinical authorities and all the Jewish communities opposed, vehemently opposed, and, and totally did not accept this Zionist movement. And if you will look at the, uh, when it came to fruition in 19, 1940s and 1948 was the time when the United Nations ratified the Jewish state. Uh, um, a half, uh, uh, actually a year before the Zionists sent a, um, uh, the, the, the United Nations sent a delegation to Palestine to meet with uh, the communities there and to see, you know, about the situation in order to help uh, because they were the, uh, t uh, talking about ratifying and creating the so-called Jewish state, the Zionist state of Israel. So when they met, the, the, the rabbi, the chief rabbi of Palestine, of the Jewish community, and I'm stressing of the religious Jewish community, went and met with this delegation of the United Nations. And this is the picture of it. It's not maybe a perfect picture, but you can look in the, if you can look in the, in the United Nations documents, actually, Mm -hmm. You can go to our site to nkusa.org, and we. This is the same picture. Maybe it's even clearer, even. And I'm quoting from the words of the chief rabbi of Palestine. His name was Rabbi Dushinsky, Rabbi Yosef Tzvi Dushinsky, a blessed memory. In, in July 16, 1947, 47, This is in the United Nations documents. But I'm just going to quote one sentence. He said, "We furthermore wish to express." our definite opposition to a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. Imagine that. Wow. We first wish to express our definite opposition to a Jewish state in any part of Palestine. This was the chief rabbi of Palestine. Now, you may be a little confused by the chief rabbi, and you right away start thinking of the Zionist rabbinate and chief rabbis there. Now, let me explain. Um, Judaism... Is means to be subservient to God. It's a religious, you know. To be, it's that's what it is. It's a religion, and we had our rabbinate. Uh, we had uh, uh, before then it was Rabbi Zunfeld of blessed memory uh, um, in the 1920s who met with the chief, who met with the King Abdallah of Transjordan, also to profess their opposition to this concept of Zionism, because Zionism started already over 100 years. We have the pictures of where he meets with King of Transjordan. Um, in 1920s, um, and and we had many writings that he wrote letters in Arabic and so forth. If you go to a book, uh, tra traditional uh, Torah opposition to Zionism, historical documents, you can find many of these documents, oh, oh. and there's many more. But basically, the there was a they, we had a rabbinate, our leaders of our Jewish communities uh, in Palestine. The Zionists, in order to uh, uh, to uh, to uh, uh, be uh, uh, come legitimate and uh, to sort of navigate the way around the problem that the rabbinate does not accept them, they created their own rabbinate and their own chief rabbis. So basically, to, they they decided that they they'll never be able to conform. Obviously, they're not going to accept what the rabbinate says that they they shouldn't have a state. So they simply made their own rabbinate and chief rabbis. And the world, of course, turns and looks at the Zionists today as the representation of Judaism. They call it the Jewish state, and they and they they look as a legitimate and uh, uh, um, uh, representation of the Jewish people and their rabbinate as the the Jewish rabbinate. So, and the chief rabbis as the chief rabbis around the world. If you ask anybody who is the chief rabbis of Judaism, they'll turn to this. They'll they'll mention the names of the rab the chief rabbis of Israel. Now that the whole thing is a farce, their state is unacceptable and has been refuted by the Jewish communities as totally illegal and illegitimate, unacceptable, and their rabbis are unacceptable and the chief rabbi is unacceptable. It's like reform Judaism that started around 100 years prior to that, 250, 300 years ago, which means to reform Judaism, as we mentioned. And they, they also made a rabbinate, even though they say that God didn't give the Jews the Torah, Moses cre created it, and you don't have to keep the Ten Commandments, and you can, and most, and they, they, they don't keep the Ten Commandments, they don't keep the Sabbath, they don't keep kosher, and yet they claim they're a Jewish movement, and they should be recognized as a representation of Judaism. They, they, they uh, ordain ministers, and they call them ministers or rabbis, 
and yet they they and, and they put, claim to be a Jewish movement, which is so ridiculous and off the wall. And yet in the world they're looked at as reform rabbis and they're part of Judaism. Yeah, they're bought from Jewish mothers, but they don't represent Judaism. It's like if you would say Buddhist Jews, you know, it's or, or, you know, it's just totally uh, antithetical. It's contradictory. And, or atheist Jews, you know, atheist, atheist Judaism, and they're going to ordain atheist ministers. I mean, the whole thing is so weird. It's just, uh, you know, it has nothing to do with Judaism. And the same thing. Uh, there's another second large movement is conservative. There, there was a movement of Jews that saw that reform was so off the wall and so far away from Judaism, they decided to be more conservative. But it's all not accepting to be subservient to God and his Torah and unacceptable, and it's not true Judaism. They, these, all these movements accept the concept of um, a, a rabbinate and a chief rabbi. Okay. I don't want to get into details a little bit, just more, but I'm just going to mention at the beginning of, Re of, of, of Zionism, actually the reform movement, ironically, was also anti-Zionist because they wanted to be uh, basically, they were simply, simply uh, to assimilate into the world societies that you shouldn't recognize a Jew. They should be accepted. People should look at a Jew and say, you Jew, you know, they should be uh, assimilated cultured people, lawyers, doctors who are dressing without the yarmulke, without covering the head and without a beard, and they should be accepted amongst the high societies of the world. Um, so they were very upset when Zionism came along and decided to make a Jew, a so-called, their own sovereignty, because then they're going to stick out. So they were in the beginning opposed it, but being they just do whatever's convenient, they all, so they turned and they decided to be pro-Zionist because it was it became very popular in, in, in the world and in the Jewish world. So they decided to become backers of Zionism. At the beginning of the reform movement was a total opposition, but it's very ironic. So, but right. but the reform movements are the backers of Zionism today, while the very religious Jews around the world, invariably, we will never accept this rebellion against God to create a Jewish sovereignty or to steal or to kill, you know, which is the um, uh, as I'm, the last point that I mentioned that, you know, it, just to have a status forbidden, certainly not by killing or stealing or taking the land away from the Palestinian people. Our hearts cry with the Palestinian people. We are humiliated. We are uh, mortified. But what is being done to the Palestinian people and it is being done in our name, in the name of Judaism. So the rabbinical authorities universally um, stood in opposition. Uh, we put out a book called The Rabbis Speak Out, 130 year record of religious Jewish opposition to Zionism, which shows around the world, from every part of the world, the great leaders of, of Judaism from this is in Canada, in Europe. And I'm talking about um, um, from, it, 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 you have, the years, the dates are the Satma Rebbe was one of the chief rabbis of Palestine um, in, in 1979. He was born in 1887. You had rabbis who passed away before the state was created. Um, and they all stood, in, the greatest leaders of Judaism, they all stood in opposition to Zionism, saying it's not authentic, it's not acceptable, it's a total uh, uh, transgression of the Torah, contradictory, not Judaism. Okay, well, you've given us a lot there, Rabbi. So I'm going to try and summarize what I've heard from you and bring it into small bites for the audience and to make sure I've understood it. So I'm going to summarize a few things that I heard you say. First off, uh, basically, I'll do it a little out of order to the last part first. The way I see it, there's basically three forms of Judah, the Jewish Judaism religion. There's the liberal reformed. There's the conservative who basically are like the reform but want to be less liberal. Um, and then there's the Orthodox. Um, and the Orthodox, also sometimes called Haredi, are keeping the old school Torah and Talmud without changing anything. So far, so good? Perfect. All right. Now, what we also have is I heard, and I want to make sure I, I, I say I got it clearly, is that for about 2,000 years now, the rabbis of the Jewish religion have maintained that the Jews are not to create a sovereign state. They're not to have Jew Jewish sovereignty. They're never, they can go back to Israel, to, you know, to the, to the promised land if they want to, but only as individuals or small groups, never en masse. And uh, no attempt at all to, they're not allowed to, end, to try to end the exile. And if I understand all that correctly, because that is under the assumption that yes, one day the Jews will return to Israel and establish a kingdom there, 
But if I understand correctly, that can only happen if the Messiah shows up first and goes to do that. And until then, the Jews aren't allowed to do that. And that what the Jews are required to do is be holy enough and righteous enough to, as a people that, the, that they'll be worthy of the Messiah coming back for them. Is that all pretty much accurate? That's very well said. And, um, uh, and, based, and just to, to understand, when that time will come, we believe it will not be through the uh, 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 human intervention. It will be when God sees that we're worthy of this to happen and the world is worthy enough then God will make a metaphysical change, a uh, miraculous happening where he will reveal his glory throughout the world and they will end the concept of atheism. Every, they will, the world will believe in, in, the, in the Almighty. Uh, the nations together will come up and serve God in harmony. We will, the, the concept of a Jewish state then has nothing similar at all with the Zionist state of Israel. It will be a concept of serving God, where all nations will go up and serve God. There will be a Jewish kingdom, we believe, but will be, all the nations will, uh, will accept this and uh, willfully, you know, they, it says they will join arms and they will say Jews, they will push the Jews to go up and say, you are, you know, these are the Jewish people. They will, they will, it will be a miracle that they will recognize who is the Jews, not, and say, so these are, they will say, these are Jews, and they will send them up. Um, and so basically, it's again a metaphysical change, a miraculous happening, and the Jews will serve God uh, through, the, uh, uh, through spirituality. It will not be a Zionist state of Israel. That will end. That will not be. This is uh, simply a rebellion. This is uh, beside the fact, as I say, it's a force. You know, it's, it's going with a force against the people living there. It is uh, simply not the concept of what will be. This coming, the end of days uh, will be something which we, it's hot, we cannot comprehend, but it will be the will of all humanity. And again, not all humanity will become Jews, but everybody will serve the one God. We believe the God, God himself will rebuild the temple. It will not be through human intervention. So that's why um, we were living together with Muslims for hundreds of years, and we were never deemed a threat, even though we have a distinctly different religion, but we were never deemed uh, a threat because people who understood our religion understood that we are not aspiring or trying or, or going to one day stand up and you know uh, do what the Zionists are doing, you know, try to take over or kill. It will be the end of time where God will make a miracle. Of course, the, the Christians and the Muslims have a different, a totally different concept of what the end of time will be like. Uh, and the Messiah will be like Mashiach. They have a different thing. But we, being that we are not to take any matters in our own hands, so it's neither here nor there. What will happen, it will happen. And um, and it, as I mentioned that like the Muslims, and it's very important to note that the Jews in these last hundreds of years, they were part of our exilic period. We were, of course, we were, um, uh, we were oppressed by, there was the inquisitions where they tried to forcefully convert Jews uh, to Christianity and where they were burnt at the stake and we were expelled from Spain and Portugal. You can go, I've been there, you can go, you can see the terrible, terrible, uh, um, um, actually I wasn't in Spain, I was in Italy. You can see how Jews were expelled from, uh, you know, every community and the terrible things that they went through, the, the crusades and inquisition. And a lot of times, uh, you know, so we, and even still then, the rabbis always told the Jews, do, when Jews were sometimes asked, should we try to buy a piece of land? And they were always warned by the rabbis hundreds of years ago already. No, it's a godly decreed exile. God is all, all almighty, and if he's compassionate, and if he understands our suffering, but he, refu but he does not allow us, this is not the solution to create our own uh, sovereignty. This is forbidden. God understands what's good for us. We just simply have to serve him and God will protect. Um, at the same time um, that the Jews were dispersed in these nations and when we were being oppressed, a lot of times it was the Muslim nations, the Ottoman Empire, that uh, opened their doors and, and, and let the Jews come in and gave us a safe haven. And Jews are required to show gratitude for what is good that is done for them. It's part of Judaism. So we, are, uh, we, we understand in these last hundreds of years, Jews um, actually uh, were taken into Muslim countries. We were distinguished, and we were uh, between the, from the Muslims in our religion. We were distinctly different, and yet, and we flourished as religious Jewish communities. We put out our greatest rabbis in in Muslim countries, our greatest uh, stars of Judaism, 
um, and we flourished amongst them, and we were we able to to flourish. They allowed us to grow and to live amongst them. And we so this is something that we have to show gratitude to. So the, the Zionists, when they come and they try to, when they make the state and they try to uh, 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 create a, a, a narrative that we have a religious conflict with the Muslims and that the reason why they, they don't in Palestine and the Arab countries doesn't want a Jewish state, it's because it's a religious conflict between Islamic people and Jewish people. That is a, a very vile a repulsive, you know, uh, type of a, 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 a claim. How dare we, when we have to show gratitude and we were uh, embraced by the Muslim countries, we flourished in their countries. And, and to go, uh, in, because you have a you, uh, uh, plan and uh, to create a, a, their, your own state and something is standing in your way, you're going to be able to excuse what you're doing and expel the people of that country by, by vilifying them and claiming they're anti-Semitic you know, and they hate the Jews, and this is a religious conflict. It could be some, nothing more uh, vile and you know repulsive as such a thing. And we, uh, we as Jews, uh, as I say, are mortified, and we we totally uh, um, uh, 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 we totally dis uh, uh, oppose what they're doing. We totally uh, 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 refute every word of what they're saying of this. We, that it's a religious conflict. We refute their claim that we are hated by the Muslims. In fact, we uh, and again we cry with the suffering of the Palestinian people and the, the that has affected their living in refugee camps spread out. The ones who left um, Palestine and the the repercussions in other Muslim countries in Lebanon and and so forth. And uh, this is something that is a terrible, terrible tragedy. What the Arabs and the Muslims call a Nakba. This is a tragedy of Zionism, beside the fact that they're rebelling against God by creating the state and, and, and killing and stealing. They, they've created this monster, uh, you know, and uh, around the world, this hate and mistrust between Muslims and Arabs and Jews. And even a lot of Christian society look at Jews and they look at them as, you know, these aggressive, uh, you know, uh, uh, violent people who are inhumane, and this is, and they, and they don't understand to differentiate between this movement of Zionism and the leaders and shakers, and movers and shakers, and the Jewish people at large. In fact, ironically, people who are more religious, people think that the more religious you are, uh, the more you are accepting of the Zionist occupation, the more fervently religious, the more you would accept this concept of Zionism and creating a Jewish state, while it's an entirely opposite. The more religious, the more we refute and the more we oppose uh, this, uh, this whole concept of creating a state and expelling the Palestinian people and harming them and oppressing them. Our hearts cry with the Palestinian people. I have to just, I'm sorry, I'm always so long-winded, but I have to really just add Although you you were so eloquent in your description, you you concisely uh, you know put together what my, what I was saying. But uh, when we do say that the Haredim, the ones who are religious Orthodox Jews, oppose Zionism, unfortunately Zionism with their endless uh, amounts uh, with the endless pockets of money, deep pockets of money that they have, they are able to uh, pay for the best public relations, PR firms, and, and they pay for edu to, in, to, to uh, breach and go into the educating, education um, uh, facilities, you know, in the, uh, and they're able to affect the more, the, 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 let us just say, the less religious, the ones who are on the marginalized of religion. So the, the, when you have the modern, what people call modern Orthodox Jews, in other words, I, I call it a euphemism for compromised religion, and the ones who are on the mar uh, uh, on the on the peripheral of of religion, a lot of them became Zionists because the, what they did was they tried to incorporate the Zionists tried to incorporate religion to give it a legitimacy, to give it a facade of holiness, and that they should be able to tell the world it's a religious conflict. So they claim it's a Jewish state. They claim that God gave us the land which God did 3,000 years ago, but we were, uh, we were, it was stipulated that we were going to be expelled if we don't uphold the Torah, which happened 2,000 years ago. But they, they totally ignore that, that part of history, and they tell the world, you see, they count on the lack of knowledge of the world of this 
uh, you know, the, 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 uh, of, uh, of the details of the Torah, and they tell the world, see, God um, gave us the land, it's our land, and we have the right to the land because it was given to us by God. And they wave the Torah as a deed to the land. And they say, see, it's God that given to us. The Palestinian people and the Arab people who are there are simply uh, trespassers on the land. And it's ours. And they, the reason they don't want us there is because they hate the Jews. You know, it's a, they're anti-Semitic. And it's totally ours from beginning. And they count using that claim as um, a, a, a tool and a method of gaining the backing of the evangelistic Christians and the non-affiliated Jews, the Jews who are already, over like 300 years, they've been reform and not lacking of the knowledge of the Torah. It's easy to buy into that and getting them to support what they're doing. So unfortunately, they incorporate religion and um, and and they and the, the world and, and many Jews who um, fall prey and the non-Jews fall prey to that and, they, and that's why they're using these Zionists who really are anti-religious and hate the Torah. And I'll quote some of the quotes in a minute with God's help. So, um, um, you know, so the, it's really so tragic and ironic because these uh, movers and shakers of this, uh, this movement were really anti-religion. And they, they simply wanted their own sovereignty, uh, their flawed concept you know of, of and a selfish movement actually of having a land that that was good for for their uh of what they felt good for their future and and they're really uh abusing and um uh, um and stealing the name of the religion in order to be able to simply uh get to become acceptable to become legitimate and um uh, uh, uh to have a uh, a, a world um, legitimacy, basically, and the, at the United Nations to recognize them as a Jewish state. So they claim it was given to them by God. They claim it's, uh, 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 and they put a facade. They use the Star of David, the name Israel, and so forth. And uh, and 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 they have to, and they claim that the Arabs and the Muslims are uh, anti-Semitic, and they don't want them because of their Jewish religion. And again, we and we see how clearly uh, 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 false this is, because the Jews lived in the same courtyards as, uh, uh, as and lived in total peace for hundreds of years with the Muslims. And there's many, you can go in history and look at the pictures of our coexistence. We um, we we enjoyed, here you can see, there's a picture of, uh, you know, just an old time, you look at the old history of Palestine, we babysat each other's children. We lived in the courtyards together. Um, uh, we helped each other. It was never, even though we have a distinctly different religion, this was never uh, a reason of of hate or anything. The the the, uh, the only issue was that the Zionists came and they decided that they wanted to make the so-called Jewish sovereignty, and that's why the rabbinical authorities stood up and said, "This is, you know, this is totally false. This is not our religion. They're simply hijacking our identity." And um, and I just want to mention this: uh, uh, they actually wanted to make these Zionists who hated religion. They they wanted to make their state in uh, not even in Palestine. They wanted to make their state in in a place that would be a fruitful land, a productive land. They wanted to make. Remember that that time was a time of agriculture. It wasn't about a technology time. So they wanted to make it in Uganda, in Patagonia, next to uh, Brazil, Argentina. Um, so, and the only reason that they decided in their big meetings, um, which they had in the 1890s in Basel, Switzerland, and it's really worth it to look at the pictures of those meetings, the first uh, um, uh, uh, Zionist Congress there, you'll see that all non-religious, they, they'll cover their heads and so forth. In fact, I have a picture of when the, the Declaration of Independence in 1948, and you look at this picture, you can see not one head. They're all non-religious Jews. They're all, how dare they? They, 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 they go with the Star of David. They call themselves Jewish, which means to be subservient to God. And, and they're, they're clearly rebels against God, heretics. It's unbelievable. And, and, they, and they decided they're going to move and make it there because of convenience sake and create the state in Palestine, even though it was a, a hard piece of land. It was, it was not as, you know, lush as the other lands that they wanted to make it, but they did, needed that because to create a state, you need 
a, a massive amount of backing. So they decided they're going to go to Palestine and, and uh, traipse around the world, masquerading as this with the facade of holiness and claim, you know, this Jewish state and the Star of David and we, you know, this menorah and so forth, and that we're representing Judaism and they're representing Jewish people. And the Jewish, uh, uh, unfortunately, the ones who are very religious, their voices are stifled and we stand around the world. We've demonstrated from day one. It's, I mean, uh, again, this is a, 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 part, a, a chapter in and of itself. You can see we have hundreds, we have uh, not hundreds, but hundreds of thousands of Jews demonstrating um, um, the, uh, it's, let me just, uh, the, I could show you, this is uh, um, from day one, from the beginning of Zionism until today, this is when Netanyahu came to visit President Obama and tens of thousands of Jews in Washington. This is in the front of the Capitol. Um, this is in New York City. Um, and we constantly have the Jewish community. This is in the streets of Jerusalem. When we took up our last chief rabbi of the true um, a chief rabbi of the real rabbinate that's still to, existing till today. Well, I mentioned Rabbi Dushinsky and its continuation. We have a rabbinate there that has nothing to do with the Israeli rabbinate that the world doesn't even know about, but that's the true rabbinate. And here we took up our last chief rabbi. You can see over hundreds of a hundred thousand, over a hundred thousand people just taking them up. And we have demonstrations like that in the streets of Jerusalem. And, and, and I must tell you that we demonstrate from day one, we've been demonstrating against this occupation. Well, these are demonstrations. This is in New York City. This is in London, Montreal, and so forth. Go to our site and site Israel, um, and another site called Israel versus Judaism. Org, Israel versus Judaism. Org. You see the demonstrations. We have demonstrations against the straight. And you must look at that because you'll see that we are we are being brutally beaten, just like the Palestinians. We, these are horses driving into. We never militant. We are never armed. The Jewish communities around the world, we are never militant and we, we don't carry guns. We have never. And this is over 70 years since they have the state and more. And we've been demonstrating and they, they, they come in, they, 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 they attack us these are with, with, um, with guns, uh, not water, it's chemicals. Um, I just want to just, um, you can see the, the demonstrations in Jerusalem, um, they're, how they're being old, old rabbis being attacked. Um, uh, these the, the, the pictures of the attacks are are brutal. There's um, uh, again, uh, you can see how they, they brutally beat them, the Jews. It, 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 uh, we have thousands and thousands of these pictures. They, uh, every, first of all, they require that Jews go into the army um, and serve in their milit in their army. Be anybody who's um, seventeen is mandatory uh, uh, service. And we yeah, yeah. so, and you can see how Jews, uh, women. Um, and, 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 and uh, are demonstrating and they're arrested. You can see girls and boys are arrested. Every boy who turns 17 gets a, becomes a criminal because they refuse to serve in the army, they're religious. And you can see this girl's crying, carrying the prayer book. She's arrested because she refuses to serve in the army. And you can see the, the, the brutal pictures. Um, um, you can't look at them all, Rabbi, but I, 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 get, I get what you're, what you're saying to me. I think Let's let and we can come back and talk about more of this sometime if you want, because there's a lot to talk about here. I think what I'm trying to get through to the audience, who is mostly non-Jewish, although we certainly have Jewish friends and volunteers and all that uh, and fans. But I think people don't get it. A whole lot of people I'll run into and assume that Zion, that, that Israel is run by the rabbis, which is nonsense, um, that Israel is a, is a religious state. And it's truly not one of the things. Those photos you're showing me are, are things I'm familiar with. What the, the Haredi Jewish community, the, the Orthodox Jewish community, tends to be treated very badly by, by, the, by the Israeli government. And um, uh, has even, <laughs> we've talked about this on other shows, they've even, the, Zionist, the Zionist government there has even been known to kill, uh, experiment upon Jewish children and kill them. That's, that's actually happened in the past. I think what people fail to see is that the, Religious, God-fearing Jewish community. Well, of course, there's religious Jews or Jews who believe in God who support all this. But for the most part, what I see, I, I see it more and more all the time, is that it is an, that Zionism is not about the Jewish religion at all. Zionism is uh, Zionist will Zionism will take you know the trappings of religion and maybe have some guy come give a blessing or whatever. But they generally just do not live the religious 
Torah observant, Talmud based religion. And in fact, what Zionists tend to have is a deep contempt for the Jewish religions. And the more the more religious as a Jew you are, the more the Zionists are likely to hate you, which is a secret more Americans ought to know, because truly the Zionists tend to be secularists and they tend to despise religious Jews. Am I right? A hundred percent. That is a fact on the ground. And somebody who says, ah, they're going to try to dismiss what you're saying. Again, we invite them, come to us, see the pictures and see the statements again in this traditional Torah uh, opposition uh, to Zionism. I'll just let me just one little quote here. Z uh, uh, Vladimir Jabotinsky, the founder of Revisionist Zionism, and we're quoting him from a, a, a statement that he uh, proudly put a, a unabashedly in the Haaretz newspaper in October 1919. This is, you know, when Zionism was starting to grow in, the, in Palestine. He wrote, in the national home that they're going to create, in the national home, we will announce that those Jews who have on themselves the rust of exile, and they refuse to shave off their beards and pay us, Iraq this, will be second-class citizens and will not have the right to vote. Imagine, because we have beards, we should be second-class citizens. Imagine uh, what racism lies in this. And, and, and it's, it's unbelievable. And they openly announced that. And then, uh, well, everybody knows Theodore Herzl, the father of Zionism, wrote in his own diary, he wrote, the, um, the way to solve the problem of anti-Semitism is to speak to the head priest of Vienna, to get an appointment with the Pope to make a mass conversion of all the Jews of Austria to Catholicism. It should be done on Sunday in the middle of the day with music and pride publicly. We are the last generation to hold on to the faith of our forefathers. It, 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 and, and so on. And the first president, Chaim Weizmann, wrote when, when the Jews were being murdered, exterminated in, in Europe at the beginning of this time in the 1930s, and I'm quoting him, um, in, in this is quoted in a Zionist paper called the Jewish Press. Oh, too. But he wrote, Palestine, in a meeting he spoke, he said, Palestine cannot absorb the Jews of Europe. We want only the best of Jewish youth to come to us. We want only the educated, meaning cultured. He doesn't mean educated as far as Torah. He means as uh, uh, um, doctors and lawyers. Basically. We want only the educated to Palestine. And we want only the educated to enter Palestine for the purpose of increasing its culture. The other Jews will have to stay where they are and face whatever fate awaits them. These millions of Jews are dust on the wheels of history and may have to be blown away. We don't want them pouring into Palestine. We don't want Tel Aviv to become another low-grade ghetto. These the words are are. And this is a Zionist Jew. This is a Zionist Jew, right? Am, this is a Zionist Jew saying this. I am white from the first. First prime, the first president of, of, of Israel, with who we're talking about. These are the, what Zionism is. This is what they're doing to the Jewish people, to the world. They profess to represent Judaism and they, they, and they stole and they take the name Israel. They made a rabbinate. They have a chief rabbi just to be able to give it the legitimacy of a Jewish state. It is a total hypocrisy of farce. And they, like you say, they're beating, oppressing the Jewish people and the world uh, around the world buys into a same because they're fearful of being attacked as being anti-Semitic because they have such power. They have APAC. They have um, um, anybody who dares to speak up against them, as we found with uh, uh, Ilan Omar, who's, who decided to speak some sympathy for Palestinian people uh, and to d differentiate between Zionism and Judaism, which is totally right and, and, and courageous, is uh, right away she's uh, endlessly being uh, uh, um, harassed as being anti-Semitic, and they're, if they're successful, every other politician is then is afraid to speak up, as it was till today. And the same thing goes for newspapers. And people like you who have shows, they'll be afraid to speak up. And that's why the world is so silent, and because of the intimidation. And, and, and it is part of this tremendous tragedy that what's happening to the Palestinian people. We went to visit them in Gaza. They're suffering. We cried with them. We went to visit the, the and we brought, we brought medical aid. You know, it's only symbolic, basically. But we went there and we cried with them in the Jewish communities around the world who are truly religious invariably are anti-Zionist. Again, they've eaten into the religious community, so they're able to show the settlers. These are mostly who come from non-religious homes or slightly religious, that they were, they were 
kand and they're, you know, they're idealists. So they think, oh yeah, part of our religion is to t- take back the land God gave us when they don't re- they realize because this is designed as propaganda that, they, that they're basically rebelling against God, but they don't come. From, this is not the true religious movement. This is the religious communities. If it, it's the peripheral, it's the out, that people are always seeing the settlers and they're seeing these Zionist rabbis when, but if you look at the core religious communities who are upholding the religion, you realize that the, what that there we are being uh, falsely identified uh, again. Why you're finding the settlers and these people who support them? It's because the power of the PR of Zionists, they emotional play on emotions that we Jews have been killed in the Holocaust, as my grandparents were, as my most of my family were. They were killed, but we didn't because of that rebel against God and make an, a a a. a a rebellion, a, a, a state that's forbidden for us. While the Zionists, these are people who's also many of their grandparents suffered and so forth, and their parents, and some of them alone, and 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 they, the Zionists used this this our suffering and to be able to, and this uh, uh, unfortunate weakness and and the lack of knowledge by being told what you see it's because we don't have a state and it's because they hate us and so forth they, they fuse to get these concepts and they're able to gain the support the settlers as i say are mostly idealists they don't come from religion they come from non-religious families or marginally religious they're, they're and they don't represent the jewish religion as jews we cry and we want the world to know that we uh, uh, we uh, support the Palestinians. On the contrary, because of the good that was God done to us, it is especially required of us to help and support and try to free Palestine from the clutches from the uh, of this occupation that's totally unjust. That is against God, against the Torah, that is against the Jewish religion. The world should step back and not be intimidated. Really study the truth. It's there in front of everybody to see. The history of our coexistence is there. The the the, the writings of all the rabbinical authorities, the writings of the Zionists, is so what you were so eloquently, really clearly um, eradicated the the the, uh, the the total difference between Zionism, this nationalism, and Judaism is there for everybody to see. Yes, you will be uh, um, uh, vilified by speaking the truth, but the truth has to be said. And one day, just like um, the uh, when when the people who supported the uh, the opposition to apartheid was considered terrorists, and but today everybody who supports apartheid is considered a racist. Because it's so clear that apartheid is apartheid. It's wrong. It's racism. And 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 no child, if you tell them that blacks should uh, it should be separated from whites, will say this is ungodly. Everybody understands that today. It's only because of it's when it's popular and in, in, in the movement that people are you know are fearful of opposing it and and support such a thing. Zionism one day in the Torah it says, "Why are you rebelling against me? It will not be successful." The state of Israel will end. We are sure of this because it's a total rebellion against God in every facet, in every shape and form. We don't know when it will end. We pray to God it should end speedily and peacefully without any more suffering. But but the occupation will end. And we urge everybody really just to stand up and speak up for the people of Gaza, the people of Palestine, their suffering and the suffering of the Jews who are being oppressed under them in the occupied land. Uh, Again, we can't stress enough how much people are suffering in Palestine in the refugee camps. As Jews, we went, we cried with them, we hurt with them. The world has to speak up. God is the one who accomplishes. Ultimately, he will bring an end to it, but we have to speak up. Well, that you're incredibly passionate, and uh, Rabbi, thank you very much. We've run out of time, even though I had more questions for you. Maybe we can do, uh, take this up again some other time. I hope so. Uh, just to remind the audience, uh, please be sure to check out the NKUSA web page and then I'm still probably saying it right, but Naturai Carta International on Facebook. We're going to make sure that we have links for everybody to check out. It is absolutely true that Jews are not a monolithic block. And even within the, the Jewish religion, especially, it is one of the dirty secrets that Zionists and pious Jews, pious religion observers Jews, often don't even get along and it's a, it's a, and, and and it is absolutely true that quite a few Jews especially the religious observants um, they either think the state of Israel needs to go away or it needs to be completely changed around because they think it's not really a legitimate state or a legitimate enterprise and it's worth knowing these things 
All right, everybody. Well, we're going to close it out tonight. Uh, thank you very much for joining us, Rabbi Weiss. Shalom. And it really, it's quite large communities around the world. We have really hundreds of thousands of Jews. It's not, uh, it's it, because it, although you're very eloquent, they say, but it, it gives people maybe the uh, uh, the outlook that it's a, a really tiny movement. It's, uh, thank God we flourish and we are the very, if you go to New York, right across Manhattan, the uh, the Williamsburg, Brooklyn, it's the largest concentration of religious Jews. There's not one Israeli flag and ditto and so is in, in, in Meir Sha'arim in, in Jerusalem and in, in, in Stanford Hills in London, the very religious communities around the world are anti-Zionists. This has to be known. We still we stand strong. Thank you, Rabbi. Just so you know, we're going to be later on tonight, we're going to be having our stream with the Freedom from Atheism Foundation. On uh, Monday, we are going to be having author Declan Finn in uh, to talk about his work. We are here every night except Sunday. So please uh, be sure to hit our fundraiser, hit that PayPal dip jar, find us on Subscribestar, look for us on We Gather app. Find us on redpillreligion.com. And otherwise, while we're still here on YouTube, please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. And God bless everybody.